In general relativity, the monochromatic electromagnetic plane wave spacetime is the analog of the monochromatic plane waves known from Maxwell's theory. The precise definition of the solution is quite complicated, but very instructive. Any exact solution of the Einstein field equation which models an electromagnetic field, must take into account all gravitational effects of the energy and mass of the electromagnetic field. Besides the electromagnetic field, if there lacks matter and non-gravitational fields present, we must simultaneously solve the Einstein field equation and the Maxwell field equations. In Maxwell's theory of electromagnetism, one of the most important types of an electromagnetic field are those representing electromagnetic radiation. Of these, the most important examples are the electromagnetic plane waves, in which the radiation has planar wavefronts moving in a specific direction at the speed of light. Of these, the most basic are the monochromatic plane waves, in which only one frequency component is present. This is precisely the phenomenon which our solution will model in terms of general relativity. Topic definition of the solution The metric tensor of the unique exact solution modeling a linearly polarized electromagnetic plane wave with amplitude q and frequency ω can be written, in terms of Rosen coordinates, in the form ds2 equals minus 2 du dv plus c2 q2 ω2, 2 q2 ω2, ω u dx2 plus dy2 2 minus infinity v x y infinity minus u zero u u zero display style ds caret two equals minus two do dv plus c caret two left frac q caret two omega caret two two frac q caret two omega caret two omega u right left dx caret two plus dy caret two right q quad inf t where she equals u 0 omega display style she equals frac u underscore 0 omega is the first positive root of c a 2 a she equals 0 where a equals q 2 Omega two display style equals frac q carrot two omega carrot two. In this chart, u, v are null coordinate vectors, while x, y are spacelike coordinate vectors. Here, the match u cosine c a b c is an even function which solves the match u equation and also takes the value c a b zero equals one. Despite the name, this function is not periodic, and it cannot be written in terms of sinusoidal or even hypergeometric functions. See match u function for more about the match u cosine function. In our expression for the metric, note that u, v are null vector fields. Therefore, u plus v is a time-like vector field, while u minus v, x, y are space-like vector fields. To define the electromagnetic field, we may take the electromagnetic four vector potential A equals two A C U two Omega two Q two two Omega two Omega U 
sin omega u d u c q 2 omega 2 q 2 2 omega 2 omega u x Display style V C a equals frac SQRT two a in C left frac U carrot two Omega carrot two frac Q carrot two two Omega carrot two Omega U right sin Omega U do C left frac Q carrot two Omega carrot two frac Q carrot two two Omega carrot two Omega U right partial underscore X we now have the complete specification of a mathematical model formulated in general relativity topic local isometries Our spacetime is modeled by a Lorentzian manifold which has some remarkable symmetries. Namely, our spacetime admits a six-dimensional Lie group of self-isometries. This group is generated by a six-dimensional Lie algebra of killing vector fields. A convenient basis consists of one null vector field she 1 equals v display style vc she underscore 1 equals partial underscore v 3 space like vector fields she 2 equals x she 3 equals y she 4 equals minus y x plus x y Display style VEC she underscore two equals partial underscore x VEC she underscore three equals partial underscore y VEC she underscore four equals y partial underscore x plus x partial underscore y and two additional vector fields she Five equals x v plus d u c q two omega two q two two Omega two Omega U X she six equals Y V plus D U C Q Two Omega two Q two two Omega two 
Omega U Y display style begin aligned VEC she underscore five and equals X partial underscore V plus int frac do C left frac Q carrot two Omega carrot two frac Q carrot two two Omega carrot two Omega U right partial underscore X VEC she underscore six and equals y partial underscore v plus int frac do c left frac q carrot two omega carrot two frac q carrot two two omega carrot two omega u right partial underscore y and aligned here she two she three she four display style vc she underscore two vc she underscore three VEC she underscore four generate the Euclidean group acting within each planar wavefront, which justifies the name plane wave for this solution. Also, she five, she six, display style VEC she underscore five VEC she underscore six show that all non-transverse directions are equivalent. This corresponds to the well-known fact that in flat spacetime, two colliding plane waves always collide head-on when represented in the appropriate Lorentz frame. For future reference we note that this six-dimensional group of self-isometries acts transitively, so that our spacetime is homogeneous. However, it is not isotropic, since the transverse directions are distinguished from the non-transverse ones. A family of inertial observers The frame field E 0 equals one two U plus V Display style VEC E underscore zero equals frac one SQRT two left partial underscore U plus partial underscore V right E one equals one two minus U plus V Display style VEC E underscore one equals frac one SQRT two left partial underscore U plus partial underscore V right E two equals one C Q two Omega two two Q two Omega two Omega U X Display style VEC E underscore two equals frac one C left frac Q carrot two Omega carrot two frac two Q carrot two Omega carrot two Omega U right partial underscore X E three equals one C Q two Omega two two Q two Omega two Omega U Y 
Display style V C E underscore three equals frac one C left frac Q carrot two Omega carrot two frac two Q carrot two Omega carrot two Omega U right partial underscore Y represents the local Lorentz frame defined by a family of non spinning inertial observers. That is E zero E zero equals zero Display style Nabla underscore VEC E underscore zero VEC E underscore zero equals zero which means that the integral curves of the timelike unit vector field E0 are timelike geodesics, and also E0 E1 equals E0 E2 equals E zero E three equals zero Display style Nabla underscore VEC E underscore zero VEC E underscore one equals Nabla underscore VEC E underscore zero VEC E underscore two equals Nabla underscore VEC E underscore zero VEC E underscore three equals zero which means that the spacelike unit vector fields E1, E2, E3 are nonspinning. They are Fermi Walker transported. Here E0 Display style VEC E underscore zero is a timelike unit vector field, while E1 E two E three Display style VEC E underscore one VEC E underscore two VEC E underscore three A space like unit vector fields. Non spinning inertial frames are as close as we can come in curved space times to the usual Lorentz frames known from special relativity, where Lorentz transformations are simply changes from one Lorentz frame to another. The electromagnetic field With respect to our frame, the electromagnetic field obtained from the potential given above is E equals Q sin omega U E two Display style VEC E equals Q sin Omega U VEC E underscore two B equals minus Q sin Omega U E three Display style VEC B equals Q sin Omega U VEC E underscore three. This electromagnetic field is a source free solution of the Maxwell field equations on the particular curved space time which is defined by the metric tensor above. It is a null solution, and it represents a transverse sinusoidal electromagnetic plane wave with amplitude q and frequency ω, traveling in the E1 direction. When we compute the stress-energy tensor tab for the given electromagnetic field, 
compute the Einstein tensor gab for the given metric tensor, we find that the Einstein field equation gab equals 8 pi tab is satisfied. This is what we mean by saying that we have an exact electrovacuum solution. In terms of our frame, the stress energy tensor turns out to be Tj carat k carat equals q2 sin 2 omega u 4 pi 1 1 o o 1 1 o o o o o o o o o o display style t carat hat j hat k equals frac q carat 2 sin carat 2 omega u 4 pi begin b matrix 1 and 1 and 0 and 0 1 and 1 and 0 and 0 0 and 0 and 0 and 0 0 and 0 and 0 and 0 end b matrix notice that this is exactly the same expression that we would find in classical electromagnetism where we neglect the gravitational effects of the electromagnetic field energy for the null field given above the only difference is that now our frame is a an holonomic orthonormal basis on a curved spacetime rather than a coordinate basis in flat spacetime see frame fields Topic: Relative motion of the observers. The Rosen chart is said to be commoving with our family of inertial non-spinning observers because the coordinates v minus u, x, y are all constant along each world line, given by an integral curve of the time-like unit vector field x equals E zero display style vec x equals vec e underscore zero. Thus, in the Rosen chart, these observers might appear to be motionless, but in fact they are in relative motion with respect to one another. To see this, we should compute their expansion tensor with respect to the frame given above. This turns out to be theta x i carrot j carrot equals omega two c Q two Omega two Q two two Omega two Omega U C Q two Omega two Q two two Omega two Omega U Diag zero one one Display style theta vc x underscore hat i hat j equals frac omega sqrt two frac c carrot prime frac q carrot two omega carrot two frac q carrot two two omega carrot two omega u c frac q carrot two omega carrot two frac q carrot two two omega carrot 2 omega u operator name diag 0 1 1 where c a q c equals c a q c c 
Display style C carrot prime A Q she equals frac partial C A Q she partial she. The non vanishing components are identical and are concave down on minus U zero U U zero display style U underscore zero vanish at U. Topic Zero. Physically, this means that a small spherical cloud of our inertial observers hovers momentarily at U. Zero, and then begin to collapse, eventually passing through one another at U equals U zero. If we imagine them as forming a three-dimensional cloud of uniformly distributed test particles, this collapse occurs orthogonal to the direction of propagation of the wave. The cloud exhibits no relative motion in the direction of propagation, so this is a purely transverse motion. For Q omega 1 Display style frac q omega ll one. The shortwave approximation: we have approximately g x x approximately equals cos q u two. Display style g underscore x x approximately cos chu carrot two theta x twenty two approximately equals minus q tan q u Display style theta vec x underscore twenty two approximately q tan chu. For example, with q equals one two omega equals five. Display style q equals one half omega equals five. We have a ferry the exact expressions plotted in red and the shortwave approximations in green. The vorticity tensor of our congruence vanishes identically, so the world lines of our observers are hypersurface orthogonal. The three-dimensional Riemann tensor of the hyperslices is given, with respect to our frame, by 3 R 12 12 equals 3 R 13 13 equals Q 2 sin Omega U two Display style carrot three R underscore twelve twelve equals carrot three R underscore thirteen thirteen equals Q carrot two sin Omega U carrot two three R two thousand three hundred and twenty three equals minus omega 2 2 c q 2 omega 2 q 2 2 omega 2 Omega U two C Q two Omega two Q two two Omega two 
omega u 2 Display style carrot three R underscore two thousand three hundred and twenty three equals frac Omega carrot two two frac C carrot prime left frac Q carrot two Omega carrot two frac Q carrot two two Omega carrot two Omega U right carrot two C left frac Q carrot two Omega carrot two Frac Q carrot two two Omega carrot two Omega U right carrot two So the curvature splits neatly into wave the sectional curvatures parallel to the direction of propagation and background the transverse sectional curvature. Topic The Riemann curvature tensor In contrast, the Bell decomposition of the Riemann curvature tensor, taken with respect to x equals e zero, display style vec x equals vec e underscore zero, is simplicity itself. The electrogravitic tensor, which directly represents the tidal accelerations, is E x m carrot n carrot equals q two sin omega u Two diag zero one one display style e v c x underscore hat m hat n equals q carrot two sin omega u carrot two operator name diag zero one one the magnetogravitic tensor, which directly represents the spin-spin force on a gyroscope carried by one of our observers, is B X M carrot N carrot equals Q Two sin omega u two o o o o o minus one o one o display style b v c x underscore hat m hat n equals q caret two sin omega u caret two begin b matrix zero and zero and zero zero and zero and minus one zero and one and zero end b matrix the topogravitic tensor which rep represents the spatial sectional curvatures, agrees with the electrogravitic tensor. Looking back at our graph of the metric tensor, we can see that the tidal tensor produces small sinusoidal relative accelerations with period omega, which are purely transverse to the direction of propagation of the wave. The net gravitational effect over many periods is to produce an expansion and recollapse cycle of our family of inertial nonspinning observers. This can be considered the effect of the background curvature produced by the wave. This expansion and recollapse cycle is reminiscent of the expanding and recollapsing FRW cosmological models, and it occurs for a similar reason, the presence of non-gravitational mass energy. In the FRW models, this mass energy is due to the mass of the dust particles, here, it is due to the field energy of the electromagnetic field. There, the expansion recollapse cycle begins and ends with a strong scalar curvature singularity. Here, we have a mere coordinate singularity, a circumstance which much confused Einstein and Rosen in 1937. 
In addition, here we have a small sinusoidal modulation of the expansion and recollapse. Topic: Optical effects. A general principle concerning plane waves states you cannot see the wave train enter the station, but you can see it leave. That is, if you look through oncoming wave fronts at distant objects, you will see no optical distortion, but if you turn and look through departing wave fronts at distant CT object, you will see optical distortions. Specifically, the null geodesic congruence generated by the null vector field K equals E zero plus E one Display style VEC K equals VEC E underscore zero plus VEC E underscore one has vanishing optical scalars, but the null geodesic congruence generated by equals E zero minus E one Display style VEC L equals VEC E underscore zero VEC E underscore one has vanishing twist and shear scalars but non vanishing expansion scalar theta equals two Omega C Q Two Omega two Q two two Omega two Omega U C Q two Omega two Q two two Omega two Omega U Display style theta equals SQRT two Omega frac C carrot prime left frac Q carrot two Omega carrot two frac Q carrot two two Omega carrot two Omega U right C left frac Q carrot two Omega carrot two frac Q carrot two two Omega carrot two Omega U right this shows that when looking through departing wavefronts at distant objects, our inertial non-spinning observers will see their apparent size change exactly the same way as the expansion of the time-like geodesic congruence itself. Topic: The Brinkman chart. One way to quickly see the plausibility of the assertion that U equals U0 is a mere coordinate singularity is to recall that our spacetime is homogeneous, so that all events are equivalent. To confirm this directly, and to study from a different perspective the relative motion of our inertial non-spinning observers, we can apply the coordinate transformation U U display style U to U V V minus R two R X two plus Y two Display style V to V frac dot R to R left x carrot two plus y carrot two right x x R 
Display style x to x r y y r display style y to y r where minus r u r u equals q sin omega u Two display style frac d d o t r u r u equals q sin omega u caret two. This brings the solution into its representation in terms of Brinkmann coordinates. D s two equals minus q sin omega u two d u two minus two d u d v plus d x two plus d y two minus infinity u v x y and Infinity display style ds carrot two equals q sin omega u carrot two do carrot two minus two do dv plus dx carrot two plus dy carrot two q quad inf t since it can be shown that the new coordinates are geodesically complete the Brinkmann coordinates define a global coordinate chart. In this chart, we can see that an infinite sequence of identical expansion recollapse cycles occur. Topic: Caustics. In the Brinkmann chart, our frame field becomes rather complicated. E 0 equals U plus V two plus X two plus Y two two minus Q two sin Omega U two plus Omega two two C Q two Omega two Q two two Omega Two Omega U two C Q two Omega two Q two two Omega two Omega U two V plus Omega two C Q two Omega two Q two two Omega two Omega U C Q two Omega two Q two two Omega two Omega U X X plus Y Y 
Display style VEC E underscore zero equals frac partial underscore U plus partial underscore V SQRT two plus left frac x carrot two plus Y carrot two SQRT two left Q carrot two sin Omega U carrot two plus frac Omega carrot two two frac C carrot prime Left frac q carrot two omega carrot two frac q carrot two two omega carrot two omega u right carrot two c left frac q carrot two omega carrot two frac q carrot two two omega carrot two omega u right carrot two right partial underscore v right plus left frac Omega two frac C carrot prime left frac Q carrot two Omega carrot two frac Q carrot two two Omega carrot two Omega U right C left frac Q carrot two Omega carrot two frac Q carrot two two Omega carrot two Omega U right left x partial underscore x plus y partial underscore y right right and so forth naturally if we compute the expansion tensor electrogravitic tensor and so forth we obtain exactly the same answers as before but expressed in the new coordinates the simplicity of the metric tensor compared to the complexity of the frame is striking the point is that we can more easily visualize the caustics formed by the relative motion of our observers in the new chart. The integral curves of the timelike unit geodesic vector field x equals e 0 Display style VEC x equals VEC e underscore zero. Give the world lines of our observers. In the Rosen chart, these appear as vertical coordinate lines, since that chart is comoving. To understand how this situation appears in the Brinkman chart, notice that when omega is large, our timelike geodesic unit vector field becomes approximately x approximately equals u plus v two minus q tan q u x x plus y y plus x 2 plus y 2 2 minus Q two sin Omega U two plus Q two tan Q U two V Display style VEC x approximately frac partial underscore U plus partial underscore V SQRT two Q tan two left x partial underscore x plus Y partial underscore Y right plus frac x carrot two plus Y carrot two SQRT two left Q carrot two sin Omega U carrot 2 plus q carrot 2 tan chu carrot 2 right partial underscore v suppressing the last term we have x approximately equals t 
minus q tan q u 2 x x plus y y Display style VEC x approximately partial underscore T Q tan left frac two SQRT two right left x partial underscore x plus y partial underscore y right We immediately obtain an integral curve which exhibits sinusoidal expansion and reconvergence cycles. See the figure, in which time is running vertically and we use the radial symmetry to suppress one spatial dimension. This figure shows why there is a coordinate singularity in the Rosen chart. The observers must actually pass by one another at regular intervals, which is obviously incompatible with the commoving property, so the chart breaks down at these places. Note that this figure incorrectly suggests that one observer is the center of attraction, as it were, but in fact they are all completely equivalent, due to the large symmetry group of this spacetime. Note too that the broadly sinusoidal relative motion of our observers is fully consistent with the behavior of the expansion tensor with respect to the frame field corresponding to our family of observers which was noted above. It is worth noting that these somewhat tricky points confused no less a figure than Albert Einstein in his 1937 paper on gravitational waves written long before the modern mathematical machinery used here was widely appreciated in physics. Thus, in the Brinkman chart, the world lines of our observers, in the shortwave case, are periodic curves which have the form of sinusoidals with period 2 pi q display style 2 pi q modulated by much smaller sinusoidal perturbations in the null direction v and having a much shorter period 2 pi omega display style 2 pi omega the observers periodically expand and recollapse transversely to the direct of propagation. This motion is modulated by short period small amplitude perturbations. Topic <laughs> summary Comparing our exact solution with the usual monochromatic electromagnetic plane wave as treated in special relativity i.e., as a wave in flat spacetime, neglecting the gravitational effects of the energy of the electromagnetic field, we see that the striking new feature in general relativity is the expansion and collapse cycles experienced by our observers, which we can put down to background curve Curvature, not any measurements made over short times and distances on the order of the wavelength of the electromagnetic radiation. Topic. See also. Sticky bead argument for an account of the 1937 paper by Einstein and Rosen alluded to above.